What's up, guys? Boy, Benny. Some things age really, really well, and some things age really poorly. Joe Biden, for instance, is not too much older than Donald Trump. But Joe Biden looks like he's seconds away from the grave. Donald Trump, on the other hand, looks like this. Check it out. This is a real photo. This is not doctored. This is not AI. This is a real photo of Donald Trump taken this weekend. The guy is turning into the Trump Giga Chad meme. It's the same per look, it's the same person. There you go. This is what look this is what aging really, really well looks like. Donald Trump. I don't know how he does it. Aging in reverse. This, on the other hand, is a photo of something that aged really, really poorly. It's ben Shapiro standing in front of a billboard that his company, The Daily Wire, put up saying that Candace Owens is uncancelable. Just a few years later, it was Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire who was canceling Candace Owens. Ben Shapiro put this up on his Instagram. Here it is. Uh, it's got 276,000 likes and it got 430,000 likes on Facebook. So are people liking this move via the Daily Wire? Well, we've predicted for quite a while that this was what was going to happen ever since this exchange. And now, ladies and gentlemen, finally... Candace Owens is breaking her silence on all of this, along with a couple of people at the Daily Wire and some very interesting leaked emails. We're going to cover it all. This is, um, well, since it was the Easter holiday and the high holiday of Christianity, uh, probably a moment to just quickly revisit the fact that this isn't about contracts or money. This is about something that is far more powerful, your connection to your faith, uh, your moral belief system. And it's very, like, it's, it's, it's deeply profound when people have schisms and breakdowns along those lines. And that's exactly what was happening. I point to you here, ladies and gentlemen, to the proverbial murder weapon of this relationship, which is Ben Shapiro uh, effectively saying that Candace Owens, by quoting scripture, is talking about him in the Daily Wire. Candace Owens quoted scripture here in this tweet saying you cannot serve uh, God and money. You'll be devoted to one and love the other. She's quoting scripture. She's quoting Christ. Ben Shapiro said, Candace, if you feel that way, take money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit, Ben said on November 15th, uh, which is a crazy thing to say, actually, because she is just voting, quoting scripture, and Ben Shapiro read himself into that. You have been acting unprofessional, emotionally unhinged for weeks now, and we've all had to sit back and allow it and tried to exercise exceeding understanding for your raw emotion. But you cross a certain line when you come for scripture and read yourself into it. I will not tolerate it, said Candace Owens. I mean, that's the end of the relationship right there, right? That's it. Boom. A couple months later, Daily Wire and Candace Owens ended their relationship. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Candace Owens is talking along with Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring. Let's see what they're all having to say because it's quite interesting. Candace Owens gave her first interview since the Daily Wire breakdown meltdown. Now, Jeremy Boring has publicly stated that he fired Candace Owens. He said, I fired Candace Owens. So that, so that gets rid of all of the ambiguity there. Some people saying it was a contract dispute or, you know, whatever, that, 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 that Candace quit. Nope, got fired. So she is in the Netherlands right now. And she sat down with a journalist from the Netherlands to talk about this. Candace Owens said some very, very interesting things in this interview. First off, let's have a listen about what Candace Owens had to say as it concerns cancel culture. Uh, many are accusing the Daily Wire of canceling Candace Owens. What does Candace have to say? The unheard voices of, of, of many people, uh, and like you in many ways, our network is getting canceled too, you know. Uh, you're someone of an expert <laughs> in dealing with getting canceled. Uh, yeah. Any message to, uh, to our viewers and our, and our supporters? Yeah. I think the best way to deal with it is fearlessly. If, if you fear that you're being canceled, don't worry about it. Because I think, like I said, we're on the brink of a mass awakening, a global awakening. And so what you're seeing, the desperation of the attacks, I always smile and I always laugh because that's how you know that we're inching ever closer. They are worried. They've lost control of the narrative, which is why they've become so extreme in their demands for censorship. The underground movement isn't so underground anymore. Where the underground movement has become quite mainstream. And... It's great. The more they cancel people, they go from, you know, far right and they come inward and inward and inward and suddenly they're cancel canceling the moderates. Know that we're close. That's what I would say to people. Right. 
So, en revanche, let's just keep going. Just keep going like you don't even care. Don't even pay attention <laughs> to the smears, the libels. They don't work. We're winning. So Candace Owens talking from a 35,000 foot perspective about cancel culture and that you have to keep going, especially if you are on the side of right. If you believe in what you're saying, you just carry on. Now she really got into talking about the Daily Wire in her next answer when it comes to people smearing you and libeling you and what kind of a tenor, a timber of a person it takes to stand up to those libels. Here we go. Call yourself a nationalist, and and then we see Congressman Ted Lieu having a go at you mm -hmm. uh, in Washington, yeah, for, and comparing you to Adolf Hitler for being a nationalist. Right. I mean, uh, how do you how do you deal with attacks like that? I don't deal with them. I actually think that I've done such a good job of going directly to the people that. The people are, have never been more awake in terms of the lying and the smearing and the libeling. And I defend myself. And that's something that I think that most people don't do. They, they feel very discouraged when they're called a name that they aren't. I mean, it's, it is, it's a lot. It used to be so heavy. I mean, imagine I'm just like, you're a racist. And you're like, I've never done anything racist my entire life. But I say, well, if you don't support BLM, you're a racist. If you don't support Black Lives Matter, you're a racist. You know, it makes people fearful to speak out. I've never had an issue speaking out. And to be honest, when people use those tactics, these tired tactics of smearing and libeling people, I feel further encouraged is to go not, deeper. Is, it, is that not a uh, like a byproduct of the identity politics employed by the left? Right, it is. And you're starting to see that on the right as well, where yeah. it, they they want to smear you out of having a conversation. And it, but I, like I said, I do think we are seeing the end of that, or at least the beginning of the end, because it's not working. It's not diminishing anybody's platform. At least for me, I have seen that the stronger I stand up against it, uh, the more respect I earn amongst the population, the, you know, the people. And if the people believe in you, who cares what the establishment thinks? Yeah. That's always been my perspective. Yeah. And national. So really quickly here. Candace Owens saying, yes, this is a monster that the left created, but now the right has adopted it and the right are beginning to can cancel people to stop them from having uncomfortable conversations. And so I keep having them to, to get the support of the majority. And that's actually quite a battlefield tactic, right? Win the crowd, as they would say in Gladiator. As I've said for a long time, it's not a dirty word. The concept of trying to correlate that to Adolf Hitler, which has very much happened in America, is wrong and ill-fitted in my, in my personal belief. And I think the reason that they do that is because you have people who are globalists who don't want people to have an identity. You have these cultural Marxists who don't want people to have an identity, who try to make these things synonymous with white supremacy. Like, you know, if you're proud of being English, if you're proud of being Irish, they'll paint you as a white supremacist. Again, another name that's supposed to make you feel discouraged. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a really a, a, a major like breakthrough point where Candace Owens is now talking about cancel culture on the right, sort of skipped right over the left and saying the cancel culture is endemic on the right as well. Now, of course, the background of all of this is that in the same month, Steve Hilton, Dan Bongino, Tucker Carlson were all fired from Fox News. And those people were the right wing populists that were platformed on Fox News. And it really, you know, it really scratches your head. It really makes you wonder. There's been quite a lot of this going around if you pay attention. Candace Owens now finally really does talk about the Daily Wire and talks about her relationship with the Daily Wire as a company in the context of people calling her anti-Semitic. Watch. He is. And uh, what do you think is, is allowing him to get all these people rallying behind him? Well, I think first and foremost, it's the understanding that we're, we're dangerously close to losing our country. I also think it's people like me who just saw what they did to him and just flipped the narrative. I, people don't believe in a narrative flip that quickly, similarly to what we were just talking about with them. So, Candace is an anti-Semite. It's like, oh, really? Now? she The last two organizations she worked for were Jewish-owned, <laughs> pro-Israel. She yeah. just like one day woke up. So Candace Owens now makes reference to the Daily Wire and to Prager University, actually. Dennis Prager uh, is Jewish and and Ben Shapiro also. also. And so she's saying the la like people are calling me anti-Semitic, but I've worked the last two organizations I worked for were Jewish owned um, and were pro-Israel. And so this is a very this is kind of like a very interesting uh, 
end around the conversation, which is many are saying that that is like Candace's stance on Israel is one of the reasons that she was fired. Also, Candace saying Christ is king, for instance. We'll get to that in just a moment. Those are the allegations. Here we go. So people are not falling for the narratives, and I think that they're frustrated because when it comes to Trump, they didn't just smear and libel Trump. They smear and libeled all of his supporters, too. Yeah. And they labeled everybody who yeah. was just worried about you know gas prices yeah. as white supremacists, and that actually had the opposite desired effect. It tethered them to him more because they realized how much the media doesn't just hate doesn't just hate Trump, but fundamentally resents yeah. Americans. Yeah. So this is it's such a like fascinating and very very interesting point here. That uh, Candace Owens is saying, for me, I just wanted to speak the truth. I just wanted to have conversations. I wanted to open up and have conversations. And ultimately, cancel culture of the right. And the right bending the knee to leftist demands is what led to me to be canceled, but I don't care because I'm going to march onward. Ladies and gentlemen, there, this is the breaking news. This went viral over the weekend that Candace Owens was apparently fired for saying Christ is king. Again, these are allegations. Four Daily Wire employees, all Christians, have approached me. Their identities will remain anonymous and leaked information of an impromptu town hall where effectively Candace Owens was was smeared as anti-Semitic and Candace Owens repeatedly saying Christ is king was deemed anti-Semitic dating back to November and meeting with Ben Shapiro was leaked in the meeting. He badmouthed Owens for not being overtly pro-Israel, apparently. Uh, some of these employees are apparently uh, considering lawsuits against the Daily Wire. Now, this is quite interesting as Candace Owens is somebody who recently talked about one being finally free from the Daily Wire. She said, I am finally free. But then also discovered uh, that this account had been le has leaked the information about the town hall. Town hall, please leave all cell phones at your desk. Uh, you're not allowed to have cell phones and you're not allowed uh, employee only, not independent contractors or anything at the meeting. Candace responded to this saying, I was not aware of this. Maybe me and Joe Rogan should sit down together uh, and talk about it while pretending we're not talking about it. Uh-oh. Joe Rogan's biggest show on earth, biggest sh biggest show on the planet. Uh, Candace Owens also promote, you know, talking about a clip of Ben Shapiro. Ben, we agreed not to talk about this, but you are very much going on a public tour, pretending not to talk about it while you're very much talking about it. Would you like for me to do the same, says Candace? Obviously has her pick of the litter for anyone who would do an interview with her right now or talk with her, knows, knows the biggest names, knows Joe Rogan, knows Tucker Carlson, knows the biggest people in the industry. Um, and what would she want to talk about? Well, what she's promoting, what, what she's amplifying here is Ben Shapiro's answer about the Overton window at the Daily Wire and saying how the Overton window at the Daily Wire effectively was closed for somebody like Candace, right? Saying that there's no re there, you're not allowed to have the opinions Candace Owens had at the Daily Wire. All right, so let's do the elephant in the room for just a moment because I saw you this week on Piers Morgan. He asked you repeatedly about Candace. Uh, you repeatedly basically said, "I won't talk about don't that." Don't want to yeah, talk. I'll about say that it. here too. I, I, yeah, <laughs> and that's fine. And, and you know, it's interesting because we all sort of came up together to different extents, and we've all done a million things together in public events and networks and all of those things. It seems to me that at this moment. She's now a free agent. She happened to end up on Locals, where which I created, and we they were a platform, not a publisher that you guys are. Can you at least talk to just sort of just sort of where it's at now? She's not with you. She's free. She's and, free to do uh, whatever she wants to do, and to be wherever she wants to be. And the difference between a publisher like The Daily Wire and a platform like Locals is obviously that a platform should have a very broad range of speech that it allows, including speech that maybe even the creators don't believe is inside what they would consider to be the Overton window. That's a very different thing than direct subsidization of particular opinions. So the Daily Wire would not have a host, would not pay a host who was staunchly pro-abortion. Mm -hmm. They'd have no obligation to pay a host who is staunchly pro-abortion. And so when it comes to the hosts on The Daily Wire, obviously everyone is able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes to me and says, you can't say X. Nobody ever says that to Walsh. And no one ever said that to Candace. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at The Daily Wire. Obviously there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Uh, and, you know, a, a lot of this has happened publicly. Uh, and the, but, you know, 
to the extent that, that the Daily Wire is in fact not a publisher, it is a pla- that, that is in fact not a platform, it is a publisher, that means that there is no moral obligation for the Daily, and there's no free speech problem with the Daily Wire saying we don't wish to pay a particular host or that host saying I don't wish to work here anymore because again, there's a parting of the ways that I'm, that, you know, is not really open for discussion at this point. Do, uh, does it surprise you? So, so that's all you need to hear, right? He goes on to talk about it for another couple of minutes, but what Ben Shapiro is saying is, one, there is an Overton window. There is accepted speech and not accepted speech at the Daily Wire, and that he's subsidizing Candace Owens, uh, uh, presumably that Candace Owens' show was losing money or that Candace was losing the Daily Wire money. I don't know. I have no idea, actually, what the terms of those contracts were. We all saw a very public sort of fight between Crowder and the Daily Wire. And that obviously exposed some of the real teeth inside of their contracts. Uh, So this would be a tough one to get out of unless both parties really wanted out. And it seems like that's the case here. Both parties really wanted out. What Ben Shapiro is talking about is saying uh, we were subsidizing Candace. So maybe Candace was losing money for us uh, and we didn't like what she was saying. And so we decide he compared it to being pro-abortion, which is, you know, a, a big time moral sin and moral evil from a traditionalist religious and Christian thou shalt not murder perspective. So like he used abortion, like saying that Candace Owens crossed the line of abortion, actually, which is quite a statement. And and so what the, what the what Candace did was beyond the pale, was beyond the capacity for any, any reconciliation. Ben Shapiro says there. So that's so. So there it is. Candace is threatening now to go out and do her own series of interviews on this. Candace Owens is uh, continuing to post that Christ is king because Christ is king. uh, And nobody ever should have to put quotation marks around that or be ashamed of that. uh, As we head out of this high holiday Easter season, ladies and gentlemen, a a reminder that to never be bullied uh, into ignoring or silencing your religious beliefs or your personal beliefs, but also to keep your eyes open and to understand that there are things that are more powerful than money, contracts, and the dangers of lawsuit or something like that. You know, you are a link in a chain that goes way back to your ancestors, and they had beliefs, and those beliefs actually got you here. And that's why you're alive today, because those, those beliefs were strong and were correct and you shouldn't abandon them and you should never feel any shame about that and so don't lose that connection i really do truly believe that's what's at play here uh and that's why it's pretty easy to predict how it was going to go right because those are the most powerful forces on earth and you should be proud of your traditions and you should be proud of your beliefs and you should never let can't serve god and money right you should never let Money, contracts, or employers stand in the way. Too many cowards out there. We don't need cowards. We need strength. It's your boy, Ben. Like, share, and subscribe. See ya.